Hi, good morning guys. Uh, my name is Michael and I want to show you what I've done with my garden over the past couple of years. So what's extremely important to remember is that context is key. So I can only show you what I've done and what you have to do is to check out your context where you are in Cape Town or South Africa and see how your microclimate works you know in your garden in the suburb in the city uh, you know in the country every little section you know in the even in your garden might be different to you know a neighbor at the end of the road so concepts is extremely important and it takes a bit of time to you know to learn what works and what doesn't so it's, it is an experiment and the only person that can uh, you know, do that experiment is you. So I can show you, like I said, what I've done and hopefully that will inspire you to do the same. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a, a tour of my garden and then I'm going to talk a bit about um, what I do for compost and fertilizer. Okay, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so this is my garden. I've got one bed here where I'm growing rape and beetroot at the moment. And in between that you'll see some fennel. I've got stinging nettle which pops up every year. And this section here I've got some wild garlic. I've got fennel and I've got a weed growing here which I use as uh, chicken feed. Um, there's fennel growing in between that as well. I've got celery here at the bottom, mint. And then on this side I've got some onions and that's still some small green peppers. And they won't grow that that big nut because we're heading into winter and I've got some spring onion down there I've got the two grapevines the one on the other end is definitely Hanapot um, Got a leek growing there. There's some broad beans, the tomato, cherry tomato, cherry tomato there. I've cloned a fig tree from the mother plant at the back, and this is my chili plant. Very good source of vitamin C, which is extremely important during this time with this virus because we need to keep our immune system you know, strong. This is a chili plant that I transplanted and it looks like it's surviving nicely. You can see the little, there's it, little leaves popping up or popping out. Anyway, the, the leaves are, the buds are coming out there, so that is surviving. That's a little lemon plant. Well, it's a plant now, it'll turn into a tree. Yeah, in this bed I'm growing bok choy, celery, there's a red cabbage, it's still small. I have an issue at the moment with this Hadida birds, they're walking over the the beds and they, they're trampling the, the little seedlings. Um, let me see if any has survived. Yeah, and there might be a, a snail or snails. You can see the little red cabbage, but something is eating the, the leaves. So I have to try and figure out how to sort that problem out. This bed is a uh, Bok choy there, there's some gooseberry plants, 
and then I've got cherry tomatoes I had some lettuce here but something ate that those lettuce seedlings the cherry tomatoes here I've got some uh, carrots there's carrots there's um, spring onion I've got chives I've got chilies there that the company that will that makes pepper juice out of those chilies and I've transplanted some of the carrots over into this bed you know as I was thinning it out and I've got celery growing as well and the celery the carrots they all self seed so I let them grow to seed and they drop the seeds all over the garden and I just let them grow and if it's in an area which I would not prefer them to be then I'll just uh, remove them and transplant them where, they, where I want them to and I've just transplanted this fig tree which I cloned about I think six months ago and I transplanted it and it looks like it's surviving it's been in the ground here for about I think four or five days that's my lemon tree which I grew from seed so it might take long trying to grow, grow your, um, your trees from seed it's easier to grow them from a cutting uh, from a cutting you'll get fruit within about two or three years from seed it might take nine to ten years and yeah I've got this fig tree, this was the original fig tree and I made about two or three clones from them so you can either use a cutting to do it or like in the in my case I used something called air layering and that is quite interesting there's loads of information you know about that and maybe at a later stage I'll do a video about air layering okay that's the one side of my garden I'll take you over to the other side now because a couple of years ago I started growing stuff in the front section of my property and there's a few beds here and this bed here I've got celery growing here there's a, there was a celery plant here dropped all its seeds and after it germinated I just you know transplanted or I put it into a seedling tray and then when it's big enough I you know, give it away to, to neighbors for them to, to grow as well. And so in between here I've got lettuce, I've got dania seedlings, and I've got kale. And at the end there, there's a cherry tomato tree. So a bird must have come there and after eating my cherry tomatoes on the other side, crapped it out on that side there and it came up and I just left it. And yeah, because I've got trees and you know whenever or whenever the council cuts down you know trees and I can get some of the you know bigger branches I will bring it home and after a while when it dries out I take the bark and I use the bark here as a mulch as a mulch and I also I use it in the walkways so what I've done here is, um, it was also just an experiment. I use those bags that they normally um, get is plastic. Um, I, I'm just experimenting with that to see you know, if it works. I'm not sure how it affects the, you know, the the ground, uh, but that is just to prevent uh, weeds from growing, you know, from growing up. Uh, so I've used the bark as a mulch and in this bed I've got ginger, spring onion, green peppers, there's kale, strawberries, there's a chili plant, more spring onion on top there and right at the end there there's some uh, comfrey. So in these little containers I transplanted some chives, 
there's comfrey, fennel, uh, strawberries, I've got thyme, and can you see there? that one over there, there's some thyme there. Some of the strawberry plants, and some of the comfrey that I transplanted. I use the comfrey as a liquid fertilizer, you can use it as a mulch, chicken feed, the fish eat it as well. And the old name of comfrey is knit bone, so that is quite interesting. You can do some research about knit bone and what its uses are for. I've got this covered here because the white <laughs> cabbage uh, butterfly likes to lay its eggs on these leaves and once those larvae hatch you know they will decimate the, any cabbages or, or the brassicas, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower and the rape and I've got some spinach here I like to grow these leafy vegetables because you can just harvest the outer leaves and use it <coughs> and the smaller leaves will just grow up again and I don't have to wait for a plant to you know mature in three four months and then harvest everything and I can use it maybe once or twice these ones I can use throughout the season okay and in this bed here you can see I've got comfrey growing at the end here. I've got lettuce on that side. There's two rows of lettuce. I've got the red cabbage. We've got onions in between and garlic I've got at the end there. And I've got beetroot as well. Here's some beetroot. And these leaves are almost exactly the same as spinach the beetroot leaves you can use it as spinach tastes the same and then I've got some celery seedlings that popped up there as well and you can see here on the edge of my uh, my stoop I've got some trays where I grow uh, seedlings so some of it is old and not that viable I'm checking at the moment which of my seeds are still viable it's celery which I transplanted after it started growing in that one bed and this time I've got a rape I've got beetroot and here yeah, pok choy so some pok choy some rape and radish as well as beetroot and uh, that one there I put some lettuce seedlings there's radish I'm trying out these bottles <coughs> just cut the top off and I put some soil and seeds in there so it acts as a little greenhouse and then in this section over here I've got uh, sage, thyme, rosemary and I've also got parsley growing there and then I've got some fruit trees, there's banana trees I've got a papaya at the back I've got a guava which I'm hoping has survived the transplanting process lemon at the back there, more the William banana at the back just in front of the, the compost heap and here yeah, I've turned my chemical chlorine pool into a freshwater pond so I'm using hyacinth at the moment to uh, to cover at least two thirds of the pool to reduce the evaporation and also the roots of the hyacinth plant uh, draws nutrients out of the, the pool and it also helps to filter the pool and I've got some reeds 
that I've also put in there so it's created a nice ecosystem and I've got fish in the pool as well so you can see this little floating styrofoam thing there so I've got a few of those and I use it as a little hydroponics well actually an aquaponics system there where I'll just transplant some of the leafy vegetables like a lettuce mainly and that will grow in there the roots will go into the water and draw the nutrients out and that's how it, um, you know, it survives yeah so the instead of using that 1.7 5 kilowatt pump I've got a 100 watt water pump in here and that circulates the water so the future plans for this pool is to use a 30 watt air compressor and that will move more water than that 100 watt water pump and that with the um, with the, the compressor with an air lift pump will lift water to about maybe 1.5 meters because it's about 1.5 meters at the bottom the shallow end and that will move more water than that 100 watt pump and it will aerate the, the water as well so I've got more seedlings that I've got on this side here I'm waiting for that to come up as well okay so what's extremely important is that um, we need to look at all the resources that we have in our neighborhoods or on our properties in our neighborhoods and no cut grass should leave our, um, our neighborhoods because it's such an extremely important resource the cut grass can be used as a mulch and it can be used to feed the, uh, the soil you can use it to make compost and it's like I said it's a free resource so if the if anybody is cutting their grass in the area they should be approached and asked if um, you know that can be kept any of the the guys that that do these garden services they can also be asked to, to bring it to a certain point in the area instead of having to go out of the area you know to a dump where it's actually given to a company that makes that compost and sells it back to us so it does not make sense for us to uh, be taking that resource out of the area so that is number one is to make um, or well, keep the, the grass make compost from it the grass and the, the leaves and to also use it as a mulch so I can't stress that you know enough is that we have to keep that grass within our uh, communities it's, um, it's not a it's not a, a weed it's not a, a waste product and we have to, we have to, we have to keep it, um, yeah, it's going to save a lot of money. Um, so we don't have to buy compost, it's going to also enrich the, uh, the soil. So please try and do that, look around. And like I said in my previous video, what I've done is I've approached the guys within the area. So there's about three or four, and I have in three or four um, garden services. And from the five or six houses around me where the grass is cut, I have uh, free compost, free mulch. I don't have to go far for it because they just dump it over my wall. Uh, so that would be the first thing that you know you guys should look at is to check out in the area what your free resources are, and to you know just to start uh, at ease an experiment to see what works in your area for your little microclimate. Okay, thank you. Cool. This is my compost heap. I asked some of the guys that cut the grass in the area to just dump the grass over the wall. And this is after a few months without me having to turn it over. And as you can see that it's this is what it's turned into. That's just cut grass and leaves. Made a nice you know, mixture and I use this on my beds. 
I used uh, the compost, mixed this with the liquid fertilizer that I've got. And I've also used the dry grass as a mulch to help protect the soil. And the mulch also reduces the amount of water that evaporates, which ultimately means that the, you use less water you know, to water your vegetables. Okay, so that's my this is the easy, lazy way to, to do it. You just leave it. Or you could turn it over, you know, every couple of weeks. Like you start in one section and start in one section there and then you move it over and the guys will just throw new uh, or freshly cut grass and leaves on that side and a couple of weeks time you move this section over to that side that the first or the freshly cut grass you move over to this side and then they throw more on that side and by the time you reach the end then you should have compost which you can use and you just move it over but if you don't have the time to do it, then you just leave it and it will do its own thing, you know, naturally. I also use the roots of the, you'll see in between here, I separate the, the roots from the, the cut grass. And I use that in the walkways because it takes longer to break down and that will also um, help prevent weeds from growing uh, in the walkways. You know, we don't want weeds to grow. So I try to keep everything, nothing goes to, to waste. And it's just a matter of, you know, thinking about how you can do things. Yeah, this is one of the drums where I do my liquid fertilizer. I'll throw weeds in here if I want to come free. I'll, uh, when I clean out the chicken coop, I'll throw that in here, mix it with water. And then I will use that. I'll still dilute it a little bit and I'll use that on all my trees. So that's you know, making my own liquid fertilizer. Okay, so you've seen how I create my um, compost and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through a quick session of how I prepare a bed. I add, well first remove the, the weeds, I add the compost, add the mulch and then I'm going to plant some beetroot seeds and then I'll just cover it up again and water it. This is not wheat, it's chicken feed. So I'm throwing it over the, the fence here to the chickens. If I wasn't close to the chicken coop, then I'll put it in a blue barrel. If I was on the other side, closer to the compost heap, I'll just throw it onto the compost heap.
takes a little bit of time, but it would have been much worse, it would have taken longer if there wasn't mulch on here before. some tomato plants and celery plants growing in between as I'm taking out as well there's celery but I've got so many on the other side and I'm waiting for some of you guys to start so that I can give it to you to plant in your gardens moving some of the mulch that hasn't broken down and moving to the side because I'm going to bring some compost in If you're starting out your garden for the first time, you might have to just dig a bit just to make sure that there's no stone or rubble in it or plastic that's in the ground. You can remove that and that'll be the one and only time that you dig in at least about maybe half a meter deep. And after that you never dig again, you just add on more compost and mulch on top of the previous year's feeding uh, that you prepared. any roots plant in the ground that eventually breaks down and provides food for any of the creatures, the, uh, any of the critters living in the soil. Okay, there you can see all the weeds are removed, the mulch that was still left on top is all put to the side and this bed is about one meter by two meters long. Yeah, it's a bit uh, wider than what I normally would have a bed because sometimes I like to straddle the bed, you know, put my well, left leg on the one 
side and right leg on the other side and work in the middle but with um, a meter long I can still work on the one side towards the middle and then go to the other side of the bed and work you know towards the middle without having to walk over the bed because that's what we don't want we don't want to compress the soil and it's that no dig method meaning that you know you dig once the first time to remove any rubble or undesirable things in the the ground and then that's it you just put your compost on put on your mulch and next season or after the next crop you add more compost and more mulch and and that's it the soil remains nice and loose the organisms in there have a nice or and the insects have a nice uh, environment to live and breed and break down any you know of the um, the matter in the soil and that feeds the plants so what we basically do is we look after the soil the soil grows the vegetables and we have to really take that as our main mission is to look after our soil and that also means not using any herbicides any pesticides uh, they are organic means of controlling pests but it's almost inevitable that they will be so we need a symbiotic relationship with these organisms and insects that we have to share this planet with Working outside in the garden, you're going to get some good vitamin D, which is very important for your immune system. And something I learned is that what we need to work on is our health. Obesity is a huge problem, and the absorption of vitamin D is somehow hindered because of that problem so doing this work is good physical exercise and just think about it some people pay four five hundred rand a month for a gym and here you're getting some good exercise uh, I, did, uh, um, I don't like the saying killing two birds with one stone but you are really multitasking any worms are fine just throw into the pool and food for the fish yeah as I was saying you are exercising while you are growing your food I think we might need about three or four of these.
nice and level. So um, I'm going to get some mulch. Okay, we're going to use a dry grass and mulch. About the plastic, of course. Plastic has come from the grass. This stuff is ending up in our soils, in our oceans. Really bad. I said before, I use the thicker roots as um, mulch for the, the walkways. It takes longer to break down. So I like to separate, separate those. Use the cut grass or on the beds for the thicker roots. I use in the walkways. Okay, the first wheelbarrow of mulch. I'll just put this first layer of mulch, then I'll start to make rows and plant the seedlings and I'll add another layer of mulch afterwards. That you prefer, you can eyeball it, use a long plank. I just add this 
together with all my tools. So uh, this is what I'm using. Okay, I'm gonna bring you in a bit closer. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay, here's my little bucket with all my seeds. Some has been given to me. We swap seeds and this is seeds that I've saved. So for most of the smaller veggies I like to use that spacing. I don't know, I think that's about 15 centimeters, more or less. I'm going to use that spacing for the idea. the beetroot beetroot seeds doesn't have to be very deep Just because of the, the size of the beetroot seed I will go about a centimeter or so but like I said it doesn't have to be Exactly that. The smaller the seed that you use, like your brassica seeds, that will just need a thin layer of soil to cover it you know, as you sprinkle it on the ground or in your seedling trays. Just cover the section with a layer of mulch. Look at that celery seedling that popped up over here. And that is what we want. We want our food to grow like weeds. We need to overgrow the system and remove food from the normal capitalist market. We should not be paying for food. 
because there aren't any jobs for everybody. So everybody can't afford healthy organic food. So if I was planting another row of beetroot, I'd do another um, spacing like that, about 15 centimeters. Because as that beetroot plants grow up, and I'll stagger them, they'll grow up. And the leaves will start competing here, but I think that is about enough. If it was cabbages, it would be maybe double that amount because of the, the width of the, the cabbage leaves. So it will be about 300 moles apart. Okay, and that's it. If you, the only thing easier than that is just to throw the seeds on the ground, scatter them and let them grow.